All right, welcome into College Nation, everyone. Tackling college football's biggest month for you. Grace Remington alongside Ryan Bass here, stepping in for Justin. You know, Ryan, I think the last time you were in a sports show, uh -huh. UCF was undefeated. Oh, um, you had to throw that I in did, there. I did, I had you to. You know, stepping in for Justin means we upgraded for the week, right? Maybe. Don't worry, though. <laughs> JG will still get in. He's got in for a segment. Uh, if you're new to the show, by the way, thanks for stopping by. We're going to debate the playoff coming up in just a little bit. Plus, Josh Newberg of 24-7 Sports, he's my buddy. He joins us to give the latest on where things stand in Tallahassee as far as the coaching search to replace Willie Taggart. And the final month of college football is always dramatic. We could have back to back weeks with a top four team losing, plus a potential Big 12 championship preview and the Deep South's oldest rivalry, Auburn, Georgia, right here on 10 News. Those Georgia Bulldogs, man, they leapfrogged <laughs> Alabama into the fourth spot in the college football playoff rankings. The Tide, look at that, they're on the outside looking in. Not in the top four for the first time in nearly two years, Grace and Oregon, of course, right there at six, right behind them. And Clemson climbs into the top three, but the biggest shakeup is on the top. LSU jumped Ohio State at number one this week. The Tigers with a wire to wire victory in Tuscaloosa. Quarterback Joe Burrow came as advertised, passing for almost 400 yards in Bryant Denny. He's now the front runner in the Heisman race. The Tigers' remaining schedule, not anything too impressive uh, nope. with <laughs> Ole Miss, Arkansas, and Texas A&M. And that's before the SEC championship game at Ogeron's Bayou Bengals. Looking like a lock for their first playoff berth. Yeah, I think it's going to be. And, and while Burrow has risen to the occasion, Grace against top 10 opponents, Auburn's quarterback Bo Nix has basically disappeared in big games. But there might be a reason for that. You see, the true freshmen's biggest games, Oregon, Florida, LSU, have all been away from the Plains. Less than 200 yards passing in each of those contests. When he's at Jordan Hare, he's much better, averaging 100 yards more per game without a single interception this year at home. Now he gets the dogs defense. Good luck with that. Georgia's D has not allowed more than 17 points all season. The only opponent to beat that number, they got there thanks to a pick six, and that was South Carolina. Georgia's only lost this year. The dogs are top five in rushing defense and top 15 against the pass as well. Bama fans, they need Auburn to upset the dogs to be able to jump them. We'll see if uh, things are close in that game. By the way, you can catch it right here on 10. Dogs, Tigers, kickoff is at 3.30. And you know, Florida will be following that one closely. An Auburn win against Georgia could help the Gators in the SEC East, but they got to take care of themselves first. Florida travels to Columbia this weekend to take on Missouri. The forecast temperature for kickoff is in the 40s, so pretty big adjustment for the Gators. But even bigger, Clemson transfer quarterback Kelly Bryant back at practice this week. He missed the Georgia game because of a hamstring injury. And great news for you Gator fans, you're already on the right channel. Yeah, you are. CBS doubleheader tomorrow here on Channel 10. Gators and Tigers got the first one. Kickoff set for noon. As for Florida State, they get Alabama State this week, so essentially it's like a bye week for them. Josh Newberg of 24-7 <laughs> Sports here with us. And I think the last time I saw you, your hair was much shorter. You've hey, let it go a little bit now. Man, coaching search, this is no time for haircuts. <laughs> so you'll cut yeah. it when they get a new coach hey, then. After they get a new coach, I'll go high and tight like you. All right, back, perfect. You know, perfect. For now, we don't have time for that. <laughs> this search has been pretty crazy now. I know their time frame is they want a head coach in place by the end of this Wait football season. Which brings up the name Bob Stoops. Give me a percentage chance that Stoops is going to be coaching Florida State next Man, season. Man, right now, 50-50 shot. But if it goes into the weekend, I think it goes down substantially as the days go on. Florida State's been negotiating with Bob Stoops now for, oh, 11, 12 days. Wow. Um, I think they're going to give him till the weekend, give him maybe through the weekend. But after that, I think we're going to hear new names. What are those other names mm. that are on those that candidate list yeah, at that's Florida fun. State? Well, you have Matt Campbell at Iowa State. You have Dave Clawson at Wake Forest. I mean, there's some dark horses like the coordinators at Clemson. And then you have Odell Hagens, the interim head coach. The momentum behind his name is only going to swell the players yesterday were all on Twitter promoting Odell Hagens. Now, I think that's an extreme long shot, but he's a name in the conversation. I'm going to put you on the spot yeah. here. Florida State's coach next year will be who? Uh, I'm going to go off the radar. I'm not going to go with Bob Stoops. I know you guys want me to. <laughs> I'm going with Matt Campbell at Iowa State. Dark horse pick, but it's what my gut's telling me. Josh Newberg at 24-7 Sports. you got a pretty good podcast on 24-7 yep. Sports. Promote that for us a little yep. bit for those out there that are Knowles fans that want to listen in. Knowles 24-7 podcast is called On the Bench. It features me, Josh Newberg, Chris Nee, and Brendan Sinone. We drop those all twice a week. Buddy, thanks so much, yeah, man. man. We appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, could USF be searching for a new coach soon as well? Well, maybe not if they win this weekend. The Bulls hosting the highest ranked group of five team in the country, Cincinnati. 
The Bearcats only lost this season on the road to number two Ohio State, but hey, USF has won three straight at home in this series. Yes, Never they know. beat UCF this year. I know you're going to throw that at me. All right, time for a little they did what? Some of the most outrageous moments that make us love college football. Ryan, start us off. Whoop, look at that one. Yeah, we feel uh, feel honored here to, to start this off with a former Heisman winner making us all say he did what? <laughs> look at that. That's Lamar Jackson, the Ravens, putting the spin cycle on the entire Cincinnati Bengals defense. We saw a lot of that when he was at Louisville. Yeah. LJA changing the game, man, especially at the quarterback position. This kid's good. And how cool good. was that? They called it the Heisman package. Lamar oh, Jackson, like Mark Ingram, RG3. All in the backfield. All in that game. Yeah, but th he's the only one of those that could actually know, make that right. move happen. Okay, but also put some respect on the offensive linemen here. They can have some unreal skill too. This is Ohio Western Michigan. Looks like you're one of the middle Ooh. play, right? No. Let's watch a little closer here. This O lineman oh, showing off his that. gnastic skills, oh, throwing great. a little cartwheel in there for a little trickeration and. I thought he looked big... like the FSU receiver at first that lined up the opposite yeah. direction. Instead, he's doing cartwheels. Look but at that. FSU got a first down on that play. Uh, they get a first down here, too. There so, you go. All yeah, right. We that like works. to see it. That works. All right, we're cartwheeling, maybe, figuratively, into the college football <laughs> playoff. And, hey, Justin's back right after this.